Desert Pavilion Chronicle and Flower of Paradise Lost look extremely good at first glance, but can they match up with the artifacts we already have? Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another pre-release discussion video where I'll be taking a deep dive into the two new artifact sets coming to Genshin Impact's 3.3 update. If you like math or want to learn something new, buckle up because we're going to play around with the numbers. In my guide videos, there's just so much info to convey in a 10 to 15 minute window that I just can't go in depth with the behind the scenes math. This time around, there's just a few characters for each set that I want to cover, so hopefully this video can give you guys some crucial info along with a glimpse of theory crafting. As always, this is a pre-release analysis, so take everything with a grain of salt. Without further ado, let's get this pre-release guide rolling. Before we play with the numbers, we have to look at the numbers we're given. Flower of Paradise Lost 2 set effect increases elemental mastery by 80, while the 4 set effect has two different parts to it. The first part is an unconditional 40% increase to Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Virgin damage, while the second part is another 25% Bloom reaction damage increase if you trigger a Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Virgin reaction. This 25% is not a full 25% increase, but rather an additional 25% of the initial 40%, which totals to 80% increased Bloom reaction damage at the maximum 4 stacks. These stacks can be triggered off field, and each stack has an independent 10 second duration. From this info, there's two takeaways that I want you to consider and two questions you need to ask yourself to go along with it. The first takeaway is that Flowers of Paradise Lost has very conditional effects. Ask yourself, does this character have the tools to consistently proc Hyperbloom or Virgin? Ideally, you want the answer to this question to be yes. What makes Hyperbloom and Virgin so powerful specifically is reaction ownership. When a Dendro Core is created by applying Hydro onto the enemy with the Dendro Aura, a normal Bloom reaction will be calculated based on the Hydro character's elemental mastery. The vice versa is the same where applying Dendro onto an enemy with the Hydro Aura will create another Bloom reaction, but this time the Bloom damage will be based on the Dendro character's EM. As you can probably visualize, this back and forth between Hydro and Dendro for normal Dendro Cores can be problematic when it comes to balancing your stats in normal Bloom teams. That's partially why Nilo is so strong, because she increases the entire team's bloom damage based on her HP. For Hyper Bloom and Burgeon, instead of building Elemental Mastery on all of our characters, we can stack EM on just one Electro or one Pyro character. The reaction ownership that I just talked about is much less of a problem as Hyper Bloom and Burgeon damage only take into account the Electro and Pyro characters EM respectively. This allows your Hydro and Dendro characters to focus other stats like crit, energy recharge, and damage bonuses like Hydro or Dendro damage bonus instead of forcing full EM build. The second takeaway is that the 4 sets damage is highly concentrated into transformative reaction damage. Ask yourself, is this character's damage overwhelmingly from bloom reactions or am I sacrificing raw damage from other artifact sets? For example, let's look at Yai Miko in a Hyper Bloom team. The beauty of Yai Miko as a Hyper Bloom carry is that when we have a hybrid build with both EM and crit, Yai's personal damage won't fall off as hard as other Hyper Bloom abusers due to the EM scaling on her turrets and the aggravate reaction. However, as we'll see, building a full EM build on Yai Miko may fall slightly behind that hybrid build. I'm not going to get too deep into the math here since I want to cover a lot of other characters, but let's take into account two example builds on screen here. One standard crit build with the 4 set Gilded Dreams, and one Elemental Mastery build with the 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost. If you do theory crafting, these values are distributed in compliance with catching main standards, but if you don't do theory crafting, don't worry about that. All you need to know is that with these standardized stats, I've calculated the average DPS of each build for a rotation of turret shots, hyperblooms, and one burst on a spreadsheet. When we include the stacking mechanic of Flower of Paradise Lost and the fact that the 4 set Gilded Dreams can't be refreshed until the current buff expires, the Solar Pearl build will average around 2.5% more DPS compared to the Wandering Evanstar build. This number gap will undoubtedly widen in favor of Gilded Dreams if we account for the normal attacks and charge attacks and the aggravates that come with them. I've also quickly calculated some other common 4 star options like the Witsith, Mappa Mare, and Osworn Eye to provide this visual. Before we move on, disclaimer, it's impossible to pinpoint all the caveats in one comparison because not every rotation is going to have a fixed amount of reactions that benefit and don't benefit from the artifact set bonuses. 
different teams have slightly different rotations that affect the timings of buffs, so view these values as ballpark averages and not absolute numbers. Anyways, with that out of the way, Yaimiko is just one example of a character that can use the four set flowers of Lost Paradise for Hyper Bloom specifically, but she violates that second takeaway that I talked about earlier. The overall verdict for Yai is to avoid this set because it's not a direct upgrade to any of her playstyles. You'll find a lot more success getting good substats on a two set two set combination or just farming the four set Gilded Dreams for her. Toma, Dori, and Kukishinobu are the predicted top 3 characters to use the new 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost, and I can say that with confidence even if the set hasn't been released yet. The reason why I mention these characters together is because they all share the same niche. Without Dendro in the equation, these characters have split scaling on their abilities and hardly provide any damage. Each of these three characters focus on defensive utility to the team in the form of healing for Dori and Kuki and shielding for Toma. Let's get Toma out of the way first so we can do a direct comparison with Dori and Kuki. Moving into the first condition, Toma can consistently proc Virgin with each wave of Pyro from his Elemental Burst. As long as you hit a Dendro Core with a Pyro attack, it will rupture for Virgin damage and does not take into account internal cooldowns like other reactions. This is perfect for Toma because his Pyro application is infrequent enough to not react with the Dendro on the enemy for too many burning reactions, which is the most concerning part of Virgin Team specifically. However, the speed of his Pyro attacks are fast enough to quickly remove Dendro Cores off the field before they explode naturally or explode due to reaching the Dendro Core limit. Other popular Pyro characters like Yoimiya or Hu Tao not only like to focus Pyro damage and crit stats over Elemental Mastery, but they also provide more Pyro application than we want with Virgin teams. For the second condition, Toma does not sacrifice any damage by abandoning his old build. If we're talking about an HP build, yes, Toma does lose a good margin of shield absorption, but what we're looking for in a Virgin team is just enough shielding to block some of the AoE rupture damage from our own Virgin reactions. The rest of the survivability is often handled by our Hydro characters which include Kokomi, Barbara, or Shing Chu. If we're talking about 4 set Gilded Dreams versus 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost, then it's not even a competition for damage. Virgin and Hyperbloom damage before resistances is calculated with the following equation. Reaction Multiplier and Level Multiplier are always constant with Reaction Multiplier equaling 3 and Level Multiplier equaling 1446.85 if your character is level 90. EM goes in the parentheses and the bonus percent at the end is where the Forset effect of Flowers of Paradise Lost goes. With the full EM build, a standardized value would be around 700 EM for the Forset Flower of Paradise Lost build and 850 EM for the Forset Gilded Dreams with 4 different elements in the party. Plug these values in and theoretically with just one stack of Flowers of Paradise Lost for an entire rotation, we already reach a positive DPS increase. When we account for the various buff uptimes of each artifact set, the average DPS increase from the Flower of Paradise Lost goes up to around 4%. Again, remember that just like the Yai Miko calculations, these are ballpark averages and not absolutes. You can always think of these numbers in a plus or minus 1% to put the range towards a 3 to 5% DPS increase depending on the variables that are unique to your account and your team. You can still build Toma with HP for shielding pyro carries like Yoimiya or Hu Tao, but specifically for Virgin teams this is probably going to be your new best in slot. Getting right into our next characters, I already explained how Dori and Kuki Shinobu also suffer from poor damage scaling and focus mainly on defensive utility. Like Toma, Hyperbloom has opened up an entirely new niche for these two characters to thrive as damage dealers and healers at the same time. The healing will come from leveling up their talents and base stats, while the reaction damage will come from our new set, 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost. So, for the first condition, Dori and Kukishinobu pass with flying colors. Every pulse of Kukishinobu's healing ring can create Hyperblooms, while Dori's tether from Ginny can create Hyperblooms from every single tick of damage it does. The second condition of not sacrificing raw damage also holds with Dori and Shinobu. Calculations for Hyperbloom are the exact same as calculations for Virgin, so visit the Toma section if you want to review how this transformative reaction damage is calculated. So with the time saved from not having to do the same exact calculations that I did in the Toma section, the following is a list of pros and cons if you're deciding which character to use for Hyperbloom between Dori and Shinobu. 
Dory's Genie provides consistent hyperbloom creations and provides energy to the active character with her elemental burst. The downsides of Dory are that her Genie is immobile and Dory suffers from energy problems. If enemies move out of Genie's tether range, there's really nothing you can do except for waiting out the cooldown and placing a new Genie down, so oftentimes you can run Dory with a grouping character like Kazuha. Dory also has high energy requirements with an 80 energy cost burst, so as you try to get around 200% energy recharge, that can take away some substat rolls from EM or HP if you get unlucky. Kuki, on the other hand, has a mobile healing ring and less energy problems because she's not completely reliant on her elemental burst. However, her healing ring pulses less frequently than Ginny's damage ticks, and Kuki also provides almost no energy generation to teammates without Favonia's sword. Overall, the verdict for Dori and Kuki Shinobu is the same as Toma. You can absolutely use the 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost if these characters are your dedicated Hyperbloom DPS characters. The 4 set Desert Pavilion Chronicle is a much simpler set at first glance, but it's more misleading than the 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost. The numbers of Desert Pavilion are as follows. The 2 set gives 15% Animo Damage Bonus, while the 4 set gives 10% Attack Speed and 40% Normal Charge and Plunge Attack Bonus for 15 seconds after hitting an enemy with a Charge Attack. Our main target with this set are Animo Hyper Carries. Other Element Hyper Carries have similar options that give more value like the 4 set Shibanawas or the 4 set Heart Adept due to the fact that the 2 set Desert Pavilion is useless on non-Animo characters. As such, from all the characters we have in patch 3.2, there's really just one character I want to look at and that's Xiao. One could argue that Shikano and Heijou could also use the Desert Pavilion set, but not only is this video getting too long, but his normal and charge attack multipliers are so bad that I don't even want to bother calculating the DPS. The majority of Heijou's damage comes from his elemental skill, and personally, I think he's better as an on-field driver for off-field characters like Shangling or Xing Chu with the 4 set Viridescent Veneer. With a Hyper Carry Artifact set, there's only one condition that needs to be considered. Does this Artifact set provide more damage than the current best in slot for Xiao? The answer to this is actually no, and here's why. Currently, the 4 set Vermilion Hereafter will beat out any 2 set combination on Xiao by a very small margin, so our goal here is to calculate whether or not the 4 set Desert Pavilion Chronicle will get a slight edge over Vermilion Hereafter. On screen, we have two example builds for Xiao in compliance with Catching Ming's standards, this time identical in weapons. The issue with the 4 set Desert Pavilion Chronicle on Xiao is that although the 40% plunge attack bonus is really nice on paper, the 4 set Desert Pavilion experiences diminishing returns on Xiao for lack of better term. This is because Xiao already gets so many sources of damage bonuses from his burst and ascension talents. If we look at the general damage formula before resistances, it has the base multiplier times the base attack first, then everything is multiplied by damage bonuses and then crit. We can get as much damage bonuses as we please, but the 4 set Desert Pavilion offers no attack percent whatsoever, so we're multiplying a lower base number compared to Vermilion Hereafter. This is reflected by the calculations where the 4 set Vermilion Hereafter is over 5% better than the 4 set Desert Pavilion when both sets are running attack, animo damage, and crit damage. This gap can close to about 1.5% when we run double attack and crit damage with the 4 set Desert Pavilion Chronicle, supporting the idea that attack is very important on Xiao. In the end, the verdict for Xiao is probably to avoid the 4 set Desert Pavilion unless your 4 set Vermilion Hereafter pieces have worse substats. You can try to get a good set for Xiao in the process of farming your Hyper Bloom and Burgeon teams since resin efficiency is always a good choice, but not every player is looking to build those teams. And that just about wraps up the characters I wanted to talk about today. Just a quick recap, the 4 set Flowers of Paradise Lost is most valuable on Dory, Kuki, and Toma, but popular aggravate characters like Yai and Raiden may also find use of this set once more testing is done on live servers. Even certain characters in Nilo Bloom teams like Nahida, Barbara, or even Nilo herself have potential with this artifact set, but I haven't calculated that stuff myself so it's still a general prediction. Meanwhile, the 4 set Desert Pavilion Chronicle is viable on Xiao but not recommended to chase after. I doubt Shikano and Heijou will find much use out of this set, but I can definitely say that Scaramouche, who is upcoming, will have great use of this set since Hoyoverse tends to release new artifacts for certain characters. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to farm either of these sets and if you are, who you plan to farm it for. As always, if you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. 
You can follow me on Twitch, Instagram, or TikTok, or just sub to the YouTube channel, whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.